Sunday, January 7th, 2024 The Epiphany of the Lord The Gospel on the Feast of the Epiphany presents us with the arrival of the Magi to endure baby Jesus, the newborn King, in Bethlehem. The feast signifies the manifestation of Jesus as King of the universe. The Magi represent the whole non-Jewish world, from this point, what was a private scene of a family consisting of a father, a mother, and a newborn baby suddenly fills a canvas of universal proportion. Until then, the story of the birth of Jesus was known only to a few shepherds in Bethlehem. Now it emerges into a story of the salvation history of humankind. This little family becomes the heart of humanity that has to be saved from the wrath of human kings because the newborn boy is announced as king of the universe. As often mentioned, the central figures of the Feast of the Epiphany are the Magi. They were not kings, but Magi or wise men or magicians. They had an expertise in reading the movement of the stars, astronomers we would call them today. Ordinary folks of the time probably considered their knowledge as magical and revered them as fortune tellers. There is no biblical foundation to establish that there were three. A tradition, however, matches them with the number of gifts offered. Three. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. The gifts presented to Jesus are royal gifts, gifts worthy of a king. The Magi were in search of a newborn king. Through them, the Messiah of Israel was recognized as the king of the universe. We note that the Magi's inquiry to Herod was about the newborn king, establishing the universal kingship of Christ. What is sure is that these wise men learned about the birth of Christ and came to visit the crib. That sounds like the pious practice of many Christians today to make a visit to the crib in different places. Only that, in our times, some people visiting the nativity scene return appreciating the craftsmanship of the crib, or the waterfalls, or the lighting. All the while, the little babe might be calling in a feeble voice, It's my birthday. Say hello to me, please. Give me my gifts. Sometimes, visitors return from the nativity scene without actually connecting to the newborn baby. Sometimes, a whole Christmas is celebrated connecting only to Santa Claus and a Christmas tree, without ever bringing the meditation on the birth of Christ, the Savior. The Magi arrived first to the palace of Herod and inquired about the special baby. Being familiar with the messianic prophecies, Herod was quick enough to find, with the help of his wise men, where the child would be born. But in his evil mind, a plan was being hatched to annihilate the baby. The fear in Herod already gives an idea that this child born in a remote shepherd village is going to influence Israel and the destiny of Herod himself. The story of Bethlehem fulfills the Old Testament prophecy about Bethlehem, the hometown of David from the tribe of Judah, the acclaimed king of Israel. Jesus is established as born from the Davidic dynasty. The new king is also born among the shepherds, further connecting him to David, a shepherd himself before being anointed king. The Old Testament has often pictured the Messiah as a shepherd. If Christmas was the moment of joy for heaven and for the Holy Family, Epiphany is the moment of joy for the earth and for every Christian. We rejoice at the birth of the Prince of the Universe because we belong to Him, to a King who is our Shepherd, and in His Kingdom there is nothing we shall want.